When it comes to making a great superhero game, the most important aspect is keeping the spirit of the character slash characters and universe intact, while leaving room to flesh out the world even further in exciting and meaningful ways. But for DC, every release in recent years, and those upcoming, seem to stray further away from what makes a great superhero game. Hey everyone, this is the Rewriter writing in. For today's video, I'll be laying out some thoughts about what my perfect Batman game would be, with the point of emphasis being that this is going to be my personal perfect Batman game, and it's likely that it may not be yours. If you have a differing opinion, that's of course totally valid, and I'd encourage you to give your thoughts on your perfect Batman game in the comments section, but please keep it civil. So I'll be structuring this video by talking about these five specific aspects. Map slash environment, traversal, combat, the detective element, and the basic story elements. But before we get into the content, I just want to make it known that I will be doing a ton of comparing to the Arkham series, which is pretty obvious for many reasons. However, this game is in no way an Arkham game. I wouldn't want it in the same universe or anything like that. I want it to be in a brand new universe. So, if you like the idea of this video and would like to see more content like this, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. But with this intro out of the way, let's dive into my perfect Batman game. Let's start with a big one, the map slash the environment. Now as far as the Arkham games are concerned, the maps have always been a bit of a letdown. Now I'm comparing the maps of the Arkham franchise to my game as they are by far the best maps in any Batman game, I just wanted to point that out. Now the map makes the most sense in Asylum because, well, you're in a prison, and it's already pretty huge to begin with for being a prison. Plus, each building and location on the island felt unique and handcrafted with a lot of character for each of them, so I'm not really faulting Asylum here. But the cracks start to show from City onwards. Now you're probably thinking, City should be the same as Asylum here because Arkham City is also a mega prison, so it shouldn't be faulted. But I say to you, I disagree. While it is a massive prison, the majority of it feels pointless. What I mean by this is that in City, you're mostly going from one point of the map to the steel mill. You go from the church to the steel mill, then a little later Wonder Tower to the steel mill, then the GCPD to the steel mill, and so on and so forth. You're always going back to the steel mill, and the journey to get there becomes increasingly monotonous the longer you play. This is for the sake of the story, I understand that, but all the buildings in between the steel mill and a couple of other important buildings serve little to no purpose aside from set dressing. I'm not saying that every building needs to be fully explorable, but it would be nice for a few more of them to have some story connected to them, some more reason than just to look cool while Batman flies over them. I know this is a broad point, but I think you understand what I'm getting at. I want the map to have a lot more points of interest that will draw our attention away from just the steel mill or a central location like that. Now for Origins, they did a good job at expanding the map, but the problem was that the city was completely lifeless. There was no cars driving on the roads, only a handful of civilians who needed saving, and basically no unique points of interest. It looked aesthetically nice, but it lacked personality. So now on to Night. But I will say this, it did fix City's problem of going back to the same location over and over again in the story, and Origin's problem of the city feeling lifeless. But what really bothered me about Night was that the story was meant to feel like Scarecrow was taking over all of Gotham, and yet you don't even get to explore all of Gotham. So much of it is in view, but out of reach. It makes the map actually feel really small when you see the other 90% of Gotham around you, but you can't explore it. Heck, you can even see Wayne Manor, but you can't even go to it. I mean, why? 
Origins was the only game that let you go into the Batcave, but it was a very prototype version and not what the fans are truly wanting out of the classic comic book Batcave. This would have been so easy for Rocksteady to implement in tonight, seeing as how we've already gotten the classic Batcave as a stealth map. All they needed to do was add a couple more features, the Batcave was right there, ready for use. Honestly, it kind of blows my mind seeing how little Rocksteady wanted to open up the world when they had all the possibilities to do so right at their fingertips. Now one last point I want to bring up because it relates to the environment is that I'm tired of each of these game stories playing out in one night. Again, the only game it made sense in was Arkham Asylum, but every story after that was far too long and complicated for Batman to solve in one night. So what do I want out of the map and environment? Well, for starters, I want all of Gotham, mostly like how Gotham Knights did it. In that game, I liked how you were finally able to fully explore all or at least mostly all of Gotham. You still couldn't go to Wayne Manor or the Batcave, but at least there's an explanation why in the story. I also loved how it took place over a period of time instead of one night. Now, that map isn't perfect as most of the open world feels pretty boring and lifeless too, but at least there's some civilians and cars driving around, so that was cool. So if I wanted a map that was that big, how would I go about making it not feel lifeless and boring? Well, for starters, I wouldn't have a mass evacuation or some freak storm make everyone leave. I would treat this game as another adventure, not some world-altering cataclysmic event like in City or Night. So there would be civilians walking around, driving cars, and doing whatever it is civilians do in video games. Now the next thing that I would do is I would have the story naturally take you to different hubs in Gotham, which all have a distinct look and feel to set them apart. You would be kept there until the story took you to another location. I would want this game to be more detective slash mystery based rather than just action, so each of these major hubs that you go to will have a mystery or conspiracy to solve, with clues being in that central location. This way, you don't have a mission taking you from one end of the map to the other end just to fill time. Now this does mean that the game isn't technically a fully open world as you wouldn't be able to travel to anywhere you wanted until the story ends, but this would allow each hub area to be densely populated with a rich amount of main story and side content. And these hubs aren't just a couple of city blocks, they're massive with lots of area to explore. Now while many people may not like this idea and want to fully explore Gotham at all times, I argue that this hurts the overall density of the world, leading to less handcrafted areas and events and more procedurally generated buildings and events. This means that the game would be a much more linear experience than a typical action adventure game, but I'm not going for typical anyway, and I love a well made linear story with great side content. And as I said, the map would fully open up at the end, as I would want new side quests to pop up when the main story ends. Now I do want to make this point clear, I wouldn't have any leveling system or level gating, meaning that you wouldn't be able to explore another hub, not because Batman isn't the right level, but because the trail of clues that he's following isn't leading him in that specific direction. And in addition, this approach to how you explore the world would mean that you would have more relevant side quests because they would start in the same location that you're already in, and this would continue throughout the course of the game. So as far as the day-night cycle, because this mystery would be so consuming to Batman, I would make it so that on some occasions during the story, he's patrolling the streets as Batman even during the day. Now, many of you will say, Batman only comes out at night. But this isn't necessarily true, as he's had to don the cape and cowl during the day many times before. However, I would have the majority of the game, of course, take place at night. Now, I like the patrol system from Gotham Knights where when they go out of the Belfry, it's the start of the next night. That would be cool to have that same feature, except during the day, you aren't just confined to the Batcave, you are able to go out into Gotham as Bruce Wayne. I like the idea from Telltale how there are some scenarios where you can choose to go somewhere as Batman or Bruce Wayne, and I think it would be neat for a game like this to explore that choice system. 
Another thing I love about Telltale is how they dove more into Bruce Wayne's character and made him feel important instead of Batman doing all the important things. Sometimes it's better to do things as Bruce Wayne than it is as Batman, so I would want that in this game too. But getting back to the more environmental side of the game, I would want the Batcave to be fully explorable as well as necessary for solving crimes and putting clues together. Now the last aspect of the world that I want to talk about is the overall atmosphere of the game. Since we're in Gotham, the atmosphere should feel ominous and foreboding, with lots of rain and sections of the city that are truly run down. I want Gotham to feel gritty and crime ridden. As much as the open world of Arkham Knight was beautiful, I didn't feel like it was very atmospheric. It was just a typical modern city with a lot of lights and flashy signs. In this version, I almost want Gotham to feel like it's drowning in a sea of corruption, like there could be beauty in it, but it's deep down. This isn't to say that I want Gotham to look post-apocalyptic like a Fallout game, but just that it isn't the vibrant megacity that it has been portrayed as countless times. Now this doesn't mean that the city is disgusting with trash everywhere, but just that something always feels off, like someone's pulling the strings and they could cut them at any moment. The look I have in my head is kind of like Blade Runner, except obviously without all the sci-fi stuff. It's a gritty, crime-ridden world, but it still looks like it could be a real city. I think you guys understand what I'm getting at here, so I won't keep going on about it. This was a lot more info about the world than I initially anticipated that I was going to write, but the world is a huge factor to the success of a game like this. Next, let's talk about traversal in this world, and it's pretty simple honestly. I want the Batmobile from Arkham Knight to come back. Oh brother, this guy stinks! Now, before you hate on me in the comments, hear me out. I don't want Arkham Knight's Batmobile in its entirety to come back, but I want the basic car mode back. The Batmobile in Arkham Knight felt incredible to drive. Its handling was really nice, it was super fast, and I loved how destructive it was when you rammed into other cars, how they crumpled like paper mache. I also liked the missile that shoots out when you're tailing a car that sends it flying into the air. That was very satisfying. However, what I don't want to come back is the tank mode. These sections were very boring to play, and I just didn't think it was necessary for the Batmobile to have a function like this when it's already powerful enough. And with the tank aspect removed, you now have more opportunities for epic chase sequences. Now something else that I thought of that would be pretty cool is to have the Batmobile be customizable. Each piece of equipment that you put on it not only changes how the vehicle performs, but also how it looks. Imagine having customization where you're putting on different gear on the Batmobile to let's say make it faster, but by doing this you also make it look more like the 89 Batmobile. Or maybe if you're wanting a slower but more tanky version of the Batmobile with more armor, then the gear will make it look like the Tumbler or the Dark Knight Returns Batmobile. This would be an awesome way to celebrate all the different kinds of Batmobiles over the years, while also making them have more importance than just being skins, like how it is in Arkham Knight. Another thing that I thought would be cool, but maybe wouldn't because you're going so fast, is the ability to switch from third to first person when you're driving the Batmobile, so that you can see all the cool interior of the Batmobile as you're zipping through Gotham. And of course, I would also want the classic grapple back, along with the grapple boost from the Arkham series, just a little less powerful, because that thing flung you across the map like crazy. This is a small point, but I actually liked how grappling is handled in Gotham Knights, how each landing spot can be turned into a launching point, but it feels very clunky in Gotham Knights, so I would smooth that out in this game. I think the Bat Boat would be cool to have to explore some of the area around Gotham, like if Killer Croc was a part of the game and you had to chase him down by boat, that would be pretty cool. As far as the Batplane, I would want this to be an end of story vehicle as it would function a lot better when you're able to explore the map freely. As far as other vehicles, there's not really any other ones that I can think of that would be cool to use in a game, but you guys can let me know in the comments. Now let's get to the section that I'm really excited to delve into, the combat. I've talked about this on my stream before. 
I stream over on Rewriter Gaming. Link is in the description if you're interested in having conversations like this. So there's a lot of different directions that a Batman game can take. I think I've come up with a really cool combat system that would be fun, but would also bring in some needed challenge to fist fights. For the regular combat, I, along with some other members of the community, agree that the fighting should be similar to Sifu. For those of you who haven't heard of this game, it's a kung fu fighting game centered around the martial art Pak Mei, and it's really stylish. Just from the gameplay on screen, you can see how much more realistic and authentic it is compared to the wild and flying all over the place combat in the Arkham games. I'm not trying to insinuate that the combat sucks in the Arkham games, in fact, it's really fun, but if I'm going to be playing as Batman, a man who has studied most, if not all, the fighting styles in the world, then I want his combat to reflect that. Now, it would be impossible to incorporate every fighting style in the world in this combat, nor would it even be necessary, but I had an idea that would make the combat feel really fresh, while also exciting to look at. I would love the combat to take inspiration from Ghost of Tsushima, where you need to use different, real-world fighting stances on different enemies. I think this would work great in a Batman game. You have four different stances, or fighting styles, that are each used to combat a different type of enemy. One stance is your basic fighting stance that you use on regular thugs. The next would be used for enemies with weapons like a bat or a knife. The next for martial artist enemies. And the last is a rushdown, defensive style for getting in close when enemies have guns. These are just what came to my head, they don't have to be the exact ones, but I'm just giving you an idea. This would showcase Batman's incredible fighting skill and martial arts knowledge while also making gameplay more dynamic. And of course, gadgets like the Batarang would still be usable in combat, like in the Arkham franchise. This fighting stance style of combat would ensure that we aren't getting too many different enemy types. I feel like a lot of devs, especially at Rocksteady, think that the more enemy variety you have, the better it is. No! WRONG! When playing Arkham Knight, especially on hard difficulty, I found the fights to not be a test of skill, but more so a test of patience, as there are too many different enemy types with different stat boosts and a whole load of other things that made the combat start to feel really tedious after a while. Instead of feeling like a well-crafted combat puzzle akin to something like Halo, it felt like information overload as you spent forever on this fight because of the electrical boosts to enemies and them getting revived over and over again. It was way too much, so I want the combat to be scaled way down. When comparing it to Knight, I would cut the enemies on screen in a single fight down to like a third, but you have each encounter feel a bit more dangerous as the enemies are a little tougher. For instance, instead of reaching a certain number of strikes, you now have to break their stamina to perform a special takedown, making the special takedowns feel more earned. This would make the combat much more satisfying and would actually be a test of skill, something the Arkham games, even on the highest difficulties, are lacking on. Now for the stealth, which is another integral part of the combat experience. Now I'm sorry that I'm always harping on Arkham Knight, but I got a lot of gripes with this game. But these gripes do show me how things can be done better, so for that reason, I am actually grateful for Arkham Knight's existence. But anyway, when it came to stealth in that game, it was far too easy, even when compared to the fighting. Now first things first, I don't want any sort of free multi-takedowns. I know it looks really stylish, but it makes the encounter so easy, because you know you can already tick 4 or 5 enemies off the checklist of enemies you gotta take down, and this should not be a thing. Now next, in the Arkham games, you have too many overpowered gadgets that don't test your skill. Now I'm good with Batman having a ton of gadgets for stealth, heck I would be mad if he didn't. But my problem isn't with how many gadgets he has, my problem is with how easy they are to use. The Disruptor, even when not upgraded, still essentially gives you a few free stealth takedowns as they can't even use their guns. The Remote Claw in Arkham Origins literally gives you three free inverted takedowns from a safe distance, and the Sonic Shock Battering is also an instant takedown when thrown at the enemy. These gadgets are cool, don't get me wrong, and I'd be fine if you had a couple OP gadgets, but the problem is that the OP gadgets started to outnumber the skill-based ones. 
My favorite gadget in the Arkham franchise is the explosive gel, and there's a reason for that. It's a great risk reward gadget. The risk is that you have to come down from your gark wheel and physically place the explosive gel, and the animation takes a bit of time. But the reward is either a free takedown if they're next to a deteriorated wall, or a free knockdown if you just placed it randomly on the ground or on a wall. I love this idea, as it makes the player have to use some strategy when it comes to this gadget. Other gadgets I love are the back claw, where you have to be on ground level to use it and line up an enemy from a railing before pulling him off it. Or, and this is a bit ironic, the sonic battering, before the shock upgrade though, that acted as a lure for enemies. These gadgets provided fun gameplay while also adding a bit of a strategic element to it. I want more of the sandbox to be filled with these types of gadgets. I mean, how cool would a sticky cam gadget be? Or a drone, similar to Joker's bomb teeth in Arkham Asylum, that can be used for surveillance and marking enemies. I think a variation of detective mode could exist for stealth encounters, like an x-ray feature in the cowl, but it has limited battery life and limited visibility. Now while I'm on the subject of stealth, let's talk about the gargoyles in the Arkham series. As cool as it was to stalk your prey from above, I feel that they made stealth too easy, as they acted as a get out of jail free card. Now yes, I do realize that if you grapple up to a gargoyle right in someone's face, they will see you and shoot you down, and they do put explosives on them later on. But the point I'm making is that you should use the shadows and the environment as a means of hiding aside from a very obvious place to run away. I'm not suggesting that Batman should feel like he's on the back foot in stealth encounters, far from this, but that each room should feel like a genuine puzzle rather than just hiding up in the gargoyles until someone walks under you. So for this game, I would remove any sort of gargoyle-like system in favor of something like Splinter Cell's approach, where light and darkness play a huge part in stealth, as the shadows are your best friend in those titles. Moving through the environment means clambering up walls and shimmying across them, or crawling along pipes akin to Batman Begins and crouching under them in the grates. I prefer the idea of stalking your prey right next to them, making you seem a lot scarier as they have no clue you're near them, instead of viewing them from a distance. Of course he has his grapple which gets him to advantageous spots, but they aren't as obvious as the gargoyles. What this all really means is that the stealth rooms aren't as tall and wide open as in the Arkham series, it's more close quarters and tense. Another factor I want to see added is the return of the fear gauge from the Batman Begins game. I know in the Arkham games you can go into detective mode to see if they were scared or not, as well as do things in the environment to scare them, but I would want to take this even further. Batman's main tool is fear, so I think it would be really cool to basically use this as a way to determine how well you are doing in a stealth encounter. For instance, if you weren't employing any scare tactics, then the enemies would gain a confidence boost, making them more aggressive in their search for you and generally smarter and more aware of their surroundings. But on the flip side, the more scared they are, the more mistakes they make and the easier it is to pick them off. This would make stealth encounters very dynamic and just generally more fun to play. Plus, I would add the ability to pull off something really cool if the room's fear level was at its height. I also think it would be cool to be able to do things in the environment like kill the lights, akin to a splinter cell, or use a batarang to knock something over that's explosive, causing the room to catch on fire. Adding ways to drastically change the environment would be really neat to see. I want to tag this last point on as it would relate to the combat and stealth of the game, and this is the ability to customize Batman's suit. Now, this has been done before in the Arkham games with the addition of skins, but I'm going deeper than that. I want customization that has an impact on the gameplay experience in meaningful ways. Now, before I get into how, I want to state that I'm not suggesting that this game should be a looter by any stretch of the imagination, as this could lead to microtransactions and a bunch of other garbage. What I am saying is that at certain points in the game, Alfred could suggest different suit upgrades that would not only change the look of your character, but also the gameplay. You wouldn't get these upgrades or crafting materials from looting beaten enemies, but rather solely from the Batcave and Wayne Tech's R&D department. For example, equipping a different style of bat symbol increases your protection from gunfire as the bat symbol is the strongest part of the chestplate. 
Equipping a different cowl increases mobility in fights as you're able to move your head around easier. Equipping different gauntlets allows you to hit faster as it's made of a lighter material. Upgrades like this are meaningful and actually lore friendly. Instead of equipping a gauntlet that gives you something generic like plus two to damage. However, you are free to upgrade the base suit as you can use it throughout the entire game. You're never forced to change the look of your bat suit if you don't want to. The way I would go about the gear would be to have the number of options that you do in Injustice 2, where you can pick specific gauntlets, chest plate, cowl, etc., without having to pick one set, but of course without all the ridiculous stat boosts and modifiers. And it's similar to the Batmobile, where certain sets look like classic bat suits from the years. Again, I don't want this to be a looter game, but having some light RPG mechanics like this would be awesome to me. This now leads me to the next section, the detective element. I want to start by talking about a big issue I had with the Arkham games, that being the detective mode. In theory, this gadget is awesome and really makes you feel like you have the ultimate advantage over your enemies. And while I want Batman to feel advantageous over his enemies, I feel that this gadget is simply too overpowering. While in some stealth encounters there are jammers, they're pretty easy to dispatch and then you can go right back to using it. There is no battery life feature or upgrades options to make it last longer or provide more useful information since it's already at its most powerful, so instead of a tool, it becomes a crutch. This is especially apparent in the investigation sequences, where detective mode gives you all the answers without you having to figure anything out. Therefore, for this game, I wouldn't want any sort of feature like that, except for the possible x-ray gadget that I described earlier, but that would be for stealth sequences. I want the player to have to enter a stealth encounter and figure it out on their own. And especially with the crime scenes, I want it to feel like a genuine puzzle where you have to link objects and look for clues. I like Telltale's approach to this where you have to link certain items together. Some rooms have items that more obviously connect, but sometimes I have to think for a bit, which is good. But I would take this a step further by making less obvious connections and more stuff in the room to investigate and form some theories on. In addition to this, I think it would be cool to have detective sections that span farther than just a room. Maybe they span an entire floor of an apartment complex, or the entirety of a warehouse. The best aspect to me of the newest Batman movie was the major emphasis on him being a detective, and this is the angle that I want this game to take. As I just mentioned before, combat will have a major part in this game, it is a Batman game. But the action wouldn't take center stage, it would be the thriller mystery unfolding through Batman's detective skills and terrifying discoveries that come along with it. One aspect that I think would really set this game apart is the ability to mess up an investigation, causing the story to minorly pivot according to how well you solve crimes. I wouldn't want this to be too punishing, where you can mess up so badly that you'd have to restart the game, but just making simple errors would cause you to show up at the wrong location or possibly incriminate the wrong person. I think it would be so refreshing to solve the mystery of the game by your own detective skills instead of detective mode doing everything for you. And if you get stuck on a certain crime scene puzzle, Alfred or Oracle, depending on if the game took place in this time, can work with you to help you. And just thinking about this, it would be cool to have the ability to go to the GCPD to consult with Gordon on a case that uh, will give you more clues for the puzzle. This way, it feels more natural to progress through the story instead of detective mode or other characters telling you what to do and you just doing it. Plus, every great Batman story starts with a mystery, and why change that now? Let's now discuss the final section of this video, the basic story elements. Let's start with the characters. Now for me, as much as I love the Bat family, I think for the purposes of this game, I would rather it just be Bruce and Alfred, with maybe Dick as a young Robin, but even that I'm not sure about. As I envision this game, I think of it as an early years Batman story due to how rough Gotham is. Plus, I like seeing a younger Bruce having to figure things out, and how he meets some of his deadliest enemies. I always loved exploring the relationship between a young Bruce and Alfred, seeing how much tension they had in the early years. I'm not saying that I want them to be fighting the whole game, but it would be neat to see them butt heads occasionally. 
But in the end, Bruce would realize that he couldn't do any of this without Alfred, and Bruce's sacrificing and dedication to the city gives Alfred a greater purpose than he thought he ever would have after his days of being a secret agent. In addition to all of this, I like having a younger Batman because his villains are much more dangerous for him as he hasn't faced many of them yet, and seeing how they cause him to question everything in the beginning would make for some really poignant storytelling. Now I'm not dead set on who the main villain would be in this game, but since it's a younger Batman, I love the idea of Andrea Beaumont as the Phantasm. This villain is one of the best early years Batman villains for how she is essentially the opposite of Bruce, using her abilities for revenge leading to people dying. Plus, you can have a romantic interest for Bruce that is more complicated than the simple flirting between Batman and Catwoman in the Arkham series. But you can also go in a different direction and have someone like Scarecrow, since the death of Bruce's parents still haunt him terribly in the early years, and the Scarecrow nightmares can portray this perfectly. Riddler would also be great for a game like this, but we have seen him in a major capacity a lot lately. I mean, there's a plethora of villains you could have, but I would want to make sure that they fit the detective element and themes presented in a younger Batman story. Let me know in the comment sections below who you think would make for a great main villain in this game. Now as far as side characters, I would definitely want the GCPD trio of Gordon, Bullock, and Montoya. Leslie Tompkins could also be really cool in a game like this, as we never got to see her in the Arkham games. Maybe Harvey Dent as DA, but I'm not sure about that. I don't want him to have too many side characters helping him, as I want the game to clearly demonstrate that Batman is very capable of defending Gotham without the help of a ton of other people, but the side characters that are there help him in some way or another. It would be neat to start the game having Bruce feel more like an island, and then by the end of it, he's learned to open up to a few people like Leslie Tompkins. Any way to give Bruce depth and a character arc is really what I would look for in a game like this. I'm looking for an intelligent, no holds barred, deep look into the character of not only Bruce Wayne, but Batman too. I want this story to be more of a mental and emotional battle for Bruce rather than a purely physical one. That isn't to say he isn't going to need a fight a lot, because he will, but I want Bruce to overcome an obstacle bigger than just a physical one. It would be great for him to actually learn something valuable that he would never forget for the rest of his crime fighting career. When thinking about this, the game that comes to my mind is Spider-Man PS4 and their treatment of Peter Parker in that story. The struggles that he was going through felt real and gripping, he felt like an actual human being. This is how I want Bruce to be treated in a game like this, I want to show how deep of a character Batman and Bruce Wayne really are. And playing as him would only make this more apparent in the times that you play as Bruce Wayne. In terms of the length of the main story, I think it would hit the sweet spot if it were around 20 to 30 hours, so that the story has plenty of time to build the mystery and come to a satisfying conclusion. And then for the side quests, I would want them to be character driven. No bland Ubisoft formula opening up the map quests or stupid fetch quests. I think it would be really interesting to have side quests spawn from events in the main story. Arkham Knight tried to do this for some of their side quests, but I think they ultimately failed at doing this naturally. I think it would be really cool if some of the side quests have to be discovered rather than them just showing up on your minimap or told to you by Alfred or Gordon. Maybe you have to talk to a homeless person who keeps spouting nonsense about a murderous cult hidden deep under Gotham. Or maybe as you're gliding through Gotham you notice a strange symbol spray painted on the wall, without someone explicitly telling you about it. Or maybe one of the civilians you helped save from a group of thugs has insight on where a certain villain might be hiding out. Things like this would be cool for unlocking some side content that you could miss for a while. And then finally, as far as how many side quests there would be, and how long they would be, I think for a pretty huge game like this, I would want around 20 side quests at around 3-4 to four hours a pop. Now this sounds like a lot, but when you play open world games, you do way more side quests than this, which is why this isn't a standard open world game, as I would prioritize quality over quantity. So, these are some of my ideas for a Batman game that would be perfect to me. Do these ideas sound cool to you? 
What would you like to see in your dream Batman game? Let me know all about it in the comments section below. And as a disclaimer, this video is not made to insult the Arkham franchise or any other superhero games, but rather to take all the best parts of the Arkham games along with some of the really cool things found in other games and fuse them into one glorious game. Arkham Asylum to me is the best Batman game so far, but I think it can get a lot better. So thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and haven't done so already, leaving a like and subscribing would be greatly appreciated. So thanks everyone, and this is the Rewriter, riding out.